Now here's the question of the century. What is test advantage? So a lot of customers, whenever they hear about test advantage or they learn a little bit about it, they wonder what it is. Like, What is this test advantage thing that I hear about all the time? Well, in this demonstration, you're going to learn what test advantage is all about. You're going to learn about what it is, um, why it's used, how it's used, and what are the platforms that it supports. So essentially, the biggest thing is that we can say that Test Advantage is a plugin for QTP and RFT. Now, if you're wondering what QTP and RFT is, so HP or Hewlett Packard makes a product called Quick Test Pro. It's an automated testing environment that um, allows for the recording of application usage by testers so that once that recording is done, they can modify the, re the resulting script and then play it back at a later date. At a later date, so that way, um, testers don't have to manually go through the same exact steps over and over again every time a change is made to the application. And the other product, IBM Rational Functional Tester, is the other product, which is pretty much does the same thing. It's just a different company and does things differently. But again, both of these Q, this, both products, QTP and RFT, are automated testing software suites that allow testers a full engaging tool of automation tools that will allow the recording of applications and playbacks as well as reporting and diagnosing of errors and so forth. Now test advantage is a plugin that works with either QTP or RFT depending on you buy the product respectively for each platform and it works with Windows Forms controls and WPF controls which are WPF controls are still being worked on at the time of this video. So the most important thing about having test advantage is that it's necessary for whenever you are doing testing of this nature with the net advantage controls on your forms. So in other words, test advantage exposes all the Infragistics net advantage controls APIs to QTP or RFT so that automated recording is possible. And here again, there are two test advantage products. Um, test advantage for HP Quick Test Pro, or known as QTP. And then we have one for IBM Rational Functional Tester. And then we also have a product right now for Windows Forms, which is available today. And then we have the one coming out for WPF, which should be out shortly. Another big question is, why do we need test advantage? I mean, you have, you have Quick Test Pro or Rational Functional Tester all set up designs to record all these applications and you can play back the recordings and it will run through all the user interactions that were recorded by the tester. So the biggest thing is why do we need test advantage? When I say we with an asterisk is because Infogistics needs test advantage too. I mean we build it but we also need it for automated testing the way I described earlier. So the biggest answer to that is that whenever you're trying to record and automate tests that contain third-party controls, and in this case, we're talking about Infogistics Net Advantage Windows Forms controls or WPF controls, is that it's not possible to get a good recording. QTP and RFT have just a tiny bit of knowledge, of general knowledge of third-party controls, but which is okay for just like the very simple things, such as if I click on a grid cell, it will record that accurately. But you know how Infogistics controls are, right? There's lots of functionality and lots of areas that can be interacted with. So all of those areas are not known by either of these testing suites. And that's what test advantage is and that's why it's necessary because without test advantage, you really can't create any useful recordings of your net advantage powered apps. As a matter of fact, one thing you can try is if, if you don't have test advantage but you do have these testing suites, try recording an application that way and what you're, what you're going to get is just the clicks and coordinates so in other words, if you expand grid rows, perform outlook grouping, invoke the um, row edit template or pop up the filter dialog or anything like that throughout all of our controls, and you know we have lots of controls in Windows Forms, you're only going to get a click and an X and Y coordinate, which will be pretty much useless upon playback. You're also unable to articulate the APIs such as grabbing cells and getting the values within the cells and you know, performing actions on the controls. Like, you won't be able to do that without test advantage. Think of test advantage as mirroring the Windows Forms and WPF control APIs into 
with various testing applications such as QTP and RFT. So that way your testers can record and the methods that are recorded in the scripts articulate the APIs directly and testers can also write VB scripts to access the various APIs manually. Here's an example of QTP running and I was clicking around a, a form and I got the screenshot. I got the screenshot. You could see the operation column. Those are various items that are recorded with test advantage. Now, here's a little graphic that I put together to kind of illustrate um, in a graphical kind of way what happens when an end user or a tester actually is running through a recording, like when they're creating a brand new recording with QTP or RFT. So these little arrows throughout the UI are basically simulations of someone clicking around and, and articulating the various items of WinGrid. Like, I want to expand a row, or I want to go into edit mode into a cell. I want to select a row or activate a row. I even put the Infragistics gauge control inside one of the cells using our control container editor component and embedded that component inside the quantity column. So that way I could put whatever control I wanted. In this case, I put the gauge control to make it look like and behave like a knob. So I was interacting with that as well. So when test advantage is installed and hooked up correctly, while you're creating a recording, you're actually getting detailed API articulations such as enter edit mode, expand the row, activate the row, and whatever interactions you do with the chart control. Click on the summary button and show the summaries. Now, without test advantage, this is what you're going to get. Now, in QTP, at least, I know for a fact that, Q that um, HP was cool to add a couple of APIs. So, in other words, a couple of Infragistics grid-only APIs were included. But, you know, that's, that's with the grid, and there's like, you know, a million others with all of our other controls that are not included. So, if you ever do things like select a cell or select a row, that, that will... It'll look like you have test advantage installed, but it's only with just a very small, tiny bit of operations. So keep that in mind. Now, our APIs for test advantage are fully documented, and I just wanted to show you a couple of pages that were ripped out just to give you an idea of the various APIs that get placed into QTP or RFT by test advantage. So these APIs here are part of the test advantage DLLs or assemblies, however you want to call them, or servers as, as they're called by testers. And these get dumped into your automation testing software so that it will have knowledge of the Infragistics controls. And here's another example API page for the toolbars control, where that one itself has lots of APIs as well. Another big thing that comes up is how do I set everything up? It sounds complicated. I'm a developer. I don't know much about the testing part. Or, you know, if you are a tester and, you know, this is the first time you're throwing a new type of plugin that works with third-party controls, I wanted to tell you that it's not hard at all. And, you know, consider me a developer and I was able to do this without any kind of problems. So you download Test Advantage. You run the installer. Now, first of all, I just want to make sure that whatever testing software suite that it is that you're using, that you have that configured and ready to go. Like, for example, I had to install Quick Test Pro because I did not have that on my machine. And I also had to install several patches and uh, just make believe it was up and running by itself without anything else, you know, how to set up the licensing server. So that part in itself, which you know, we'll leave it to the capable hands of the people that are familiar with that software, will get up and running. But then installing test advantage is very easy. You install it, configure it, check out some of the documentation to see what's going on, and then you start recording your tests. And I'll basically show you how this works. I'll show you some stuff on my file system and how, it, how easy it is to configure it and all that kind of stuff. So don't worry. It's very easy. And then finally, once you have test advantage up and running throughout the, the life cycle of your applications and your testing cycles, um, if ever you need any kind of help, and this goes for everything that Infragistics offers, you can always get help at, develop, at, our, at our developer support department. Um, you can always submit an issue. Um, if you also know the name of your sales representative, always get in touch with them and tell them, you know, if there's something you want to check out for you or you have an issue or questions or anything at all. And, you know, we're always here to help. So you have my email address as well in these videos. So make sure you use them and take advantage of, you know, getting the help that we're here to offer all the time.
let's take a look at test advantage and how this works. It's demo time. So what do we have going on here? Let's take a look at, I want to show you something. So once I install test advantage, um, we have to get it up and running. So let's go to my start in Fragistics test advantage shortcut here in the start menu. And you're going to see a shortcut for a test advantage, and then there's a version utility. Let's click on that. While this loads up, there's something I wanted to communicate that's very important. Volumes. So you know about all the various infragistics volumes, right? So let's say if you're testing a 2009 Volume 1 application, you need to get a 2009 Volume 1 version of test advantage. If you're testing 2011 Volume 2 version of your application, meaning you have the Windows Forms control set, part of the NetAdvantage 2011 Volume 1 controls on your Windows Form, you need to get that same exact 11.1 corresponding version of Test Advantage. So the version of Test Advantage must match the version of the Infragistics controls that you're testing. That's how it works. And, that doesn't, and that's regardless of whether you have a service release or a hotfix installed on one or the other. You just have to make sure that the volumes match. That's very important. This version utility is awesome, and I love it because I remember many years ago when Test Advantage first came out, I had to do this manually, but now it's all automated by this utility. So if I go to my program files, HP Quick Test Pro and the DAT folder, you're going to find a file that's very important to QTP. It's called the swfconfig.xml file. And I have it open here in my editor. So you notice that this, this file essentially is where all references to other additional plugins are referenced. So it's empty basically right now. That's what it looks like without touching it. Now when I run the Infragistics Test Advantage version utility, I'm going to click on this little drop down and I want to set it up so that I hook it up with 11.1. .1. Now it's possible that you may have a whole bunch of items in this drop down. What you do is you just decide which version of your application you're going to test and you select the corresponding Net advantage volume of test advantage that you want to configure because you can only do one volume at a time. Okay, that's how it works. You can only have one volume configured at a time in QTP. But don't worry, this utility makes it very easy. So I want to hook up to 11.1. .1. I'm going to click on apply. Okay, and when I click on my editor, it's going to say, hey, it changed. Let's click yes to reload it. And now we can see the difference. And I, I want to make sure that you guys out there, guys and girls, see this because. If something ever happens, like where you think you hooked it up and it's not working, just go into the swfconfig.xml file to see that these assemblies are correctly referenced and that the path and file name to the DLL is correct. I mean, I've never had any problems with this, but you know, it's always good to know a little bit about the plumbing underneath, just in case, so you don't, well, you don't have to call a plumber. Okay, so that's all hooked up and ready to go. And now you know where this is. Now, next thing I'm going to do is let's fire up QTP. So let's go here, QTP, and we launch it by the shortcut here, HP Quick Test Professional. So it might take a moment to load up. It's going to check the licensing server to make sure that I'm, that I'm correctly licensed. And then it's going to load all the add-ins. I will click OK. And here it is, HP QTP version 11. So it's still loading up. It's a decent sized application. It's not like a typical tiny application, but remember, it's a really large and it's elaborate and sophisticated testing suite of software. Now here it is, it is loaded up and it's ready to go. So I'm going to just do a quick recording. So I'll click record and I'm going to navigate to Windows application. I'm going to add a Windows application to this. And I'm actually going to point to an application that I used to make a bunch of other videos because that one was pretty cool. Click on OK. Then Mercury will automatically launch my executable for me. And here it is loading up. And it's still loading up and it's ready to go. OK, now I can start playing around with this. If I move this over to the side, you could see in the background what's going on. So let's say if I do, now some of these things will be part of QTP intrinsically, like activate cell, that should be, that should be, um, you know, pretty much one of the things that already comes with it. 
But there's other things, like for example, if I want to launch this column chooser, that's not part of RF. That's not part of QTP or RFT. It's part of test advantage. So I want to uncheck some of these guys and hide some columns. Notice what's getting recorded here. So we close the field chooser. I want to pin down some rows. I want to let's see. Let's type in some filtering. I want to see everything with KI. Or actually, let me switch this here so that we get everything that contains AI. So it should be one record, and I'm going to remove the record, the actual filter con uh, condition. Notice how as I keep setting a filter row style here with that method, it shows like the arguments such as contains KI, contains K. So just like one character at a time. Then I could do some outlook grouping. So if I were to go here, and let's say if I do country and I drag country up here, that's again, what we're doing is we're set group by columns. That's the method that was being recorded. So again, these are all the cool things that, that are being recorded right now. So if I were to stop this and then rerun it, it'll pretty much play back that same recording by articulating everything on the controls that I touched in this recording. And just to show you, like, if I were to just you know, hit the dot here and do some IntelliSense, these are all the items available off the grid directly. And another one that I wanted to show you that's very important is the get any properties or get any property methods. These are very important because, as you know, the net advantage controls have really deep object models with lots of APIs. And if you want to grab one of those properties and test the value or test its state, you can use get NA property and you're able to navigate to whatever properties that you're looking for anywhere within the object model. And then you'll have to qualify the path to that property. And then the argument is a string, which is something like the grid dot display layout dot band sub zero dot column sub zero dot value or something or dot header dot text or whatever API members you want to access. Get NA properties is also cool because let's say if you already have a column object at your disposal here through this script, calling the get NA properties method off of whatever object is great because it will return a collection of all the properties that are off of that object that you have referenced. So let's say if you have a column object or a row object, you can call the get NA properties method and it will return basically an array of all the objects that are sub-objects of that that you have referenced. So again, very useful and very easy to get access to all of the properties and test them all in your script. Now this is like a very simple script that was recorded, but testers will usually go in here and, and modify these scripts and test other types of data. They'll hook it up to that table data source that's within QTP, or they'll also um, you know have for each loop or they'll have some kind of case statements and so forth to make the test more valid. So that's basically what test advantage is all about. So hopefully after seeing this video, you'll understand what it's about, how it works and why you need it, as well as which volumes you need to worry about. So it's recommended that you buy the test advantage version that matches the least version or the oldest version of the net advantage controls that you have. Let's say you have an enterprise with 2010 volume one, two, three, four, and then whatever later on. Buy the earliest version of test advantage for your for the oldest version of net advantage that you have. So that means you buy the 10.1 version of test advantage, and then you get all the other subsequent ones after as well. So that's how that works. Remember the SWF config.xml file. That's where the modifications are made whenever referencing the test advantage DLLs. Remember the configuration utility that's important as well. And you want to flip through one volume and the next whenever you're testing different volumes of net advantage versus test advantage. And you also want to make sure that you keep the volumes the same of your testing. So if you want to test 10.1 stuff, you need to get the 10.1 test advantage ready. And that's basically everything I have to say about Test Advantage for today, and thank you very much for watching. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.